dear colleagues, I'm Christoph Diener from the University of Duisburg-Essen in Germany. And this month I would like to cover only one topic, which is monoclonal antibodies against CGRP or the CGRP receptor in the prophylaxis of migraine. CGRP plays an important role in the pathophysiology of migraine. It is released in large quantities uh, during a migraine attack. And if you inject sumatriptan, for example, this lowers the concentration of CGRP in the bloodstream. The new monoclonal antibodies were developed uh, to bind CGRP or to block the CGRP receptor, and we have four of them. Erenumab is uh, given in doses of 70 or 150 milligrams subcutaneously every four weeks. Fremanesumab, 20, 225 milligrams every four weeks or 675 milligrams every three months. Galsanetsumab in doses of 120 or 300 milligrams every four weeks. And Eptinetsumab, which is given IV in a dose of 100 or 300 milligrams. How effective are these new monoclonal antibodies. The efficacy in terms of the 50% responder rate, which means patients who have at least a 50% reduction in monthly migraine days is somewhere between 45 and 60%. And the mean reduction of migraine days per month is between three and six days. These drugs are also effective in people who failed prior therapies for all of the monoclonal antibodies. We have studies in people who failed at least three prior treatments, for example, with beta blockers or topiramate. We have now also long-term results from registries for a duration of one to three years, and these drugs uh, do not lose efficacy, and they have an excellent adverse event profile, and only about uh, three to seven percent of patients will terminate the treatment due to adverse events. In the meantime, we have a head-to-head -head comparison between topiramate and erenumab, and erenumab was clearly more effective and had fewer patients who dropped out due to adverse events. Overall, the adverse event rate is somewhere between 3 and 6 percent, and the most frequent adverse event is constipation, which is more frequently uh, reported with erenumab than with the other monoclonal antibodies. Which patients are candidates for these new but unfortunately expensive drugs? These are patients who failed the available therapies, for example, beta blockers, flunaricin, amitriptyline, valproic acid, topiramate, or in the case of chronic migraine, onabotulinum toxin A, patients who could not tolerate them or have contraindications. What are the parameters for success? This is, I think, the 50% responder rate on one side, the reduction in migraine days per month, and the subjective verdict of the patient who says, I am much better than I was before. How long should these uh, monoclonal antibodies be used? We recommend a time period of 9 to 12 months, and then it makes sense to pause and after about four to six weeks, you can see whether a patient again needs another course of monoclonal antibodies or has improved in a way that treatment is no longer important. What's about medication overuse headache? This is the most difficult to treat uh, migraine condition, and all of the monoclonal antibodies are effective in this condition, and this is a big step forward. Because nowadays, you would start first with topiramate or onabotulinum toxin A. If they are not effective, switch to a monoclonal antibody. And only if the monoclonal antibody is not effective, the patient has to undergo a medication pause or medication withdrawal. Should we switch if one of the monoclonal antibodies is not effective? Yes. For example, if erenumab, which acts at the receptor, is not effective, it's possible to switch to fremanetsumab, galsanetsumab, and eptinetsumab, and the other way around. Which patients should not be treated with a monoclonal antibody against CGRP or the CGRP receptor? CGRP plays a very important role in the vascular system. It's the most potent vasodilator we have. And it also plays a role in the mucosa of the bronchial system and the GI tract. And at present, 
We do not have really good enough safety data for particular patient groups, and these include patients with serious vascular diseases like stroke, TIA, subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, myocardial infarction, or stable coronary heart disease and Raynaud's disease, but also the patients with inflammatory bowel disease, patients with COPD, and patients with wound healing problems. In addition, uh, patient, uh, females who are pregnant or breastfeeding should not be treated and these drugs are not approved for children and adolescents. In conclusion, these drugs are a major step forward in the prophylaxis of migraine. They are highly specific, they have an excellent side effect profile, but unfortunately at present they are very expensive, which limits the use in many healthcare systems. Dear colleagues, I am Christoph Diener from the University of Duisburg-Essen in Germany. Thank you much for listening and watching.